So the next question, we were asked that uh, I chose to tackle, was should we pray to the Father, Son, or Holy Spirit? And what the general pattern we see in Scripture and throughout history, this is not the first time uh, this question has been asked, fortunately. Uh, so as I kind of dug into kind of church history, I kept finding the similar phrase. I don't know who originally said it, but many people quote it, uh, so I'll take credit for it. Um, here's the pattern. We pray to the Father in the name of the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Spirit. So to God, through the Son, in the Spirit. Uh, and when I say all that, but, but I'm kind of breaking down is this. When Jesus was asked, teach us to pray, and they were like straight as direct a question as we get in Scripture about prayer, teach us to pray. He says, pray that in this way, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So he starts out saying, you know what, I'll teach you to pray, this is how I think you should pray. Pray to our Father who is in heaven. That's not to say we don't see instances of praying directly to Jesus Christ. Jesus himself said in John 14, 14, if you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. All right, so we certainly see a, uh, you know, a praying to Jesus certainly fits the mold. We also see instances in which people pray directly to Jesus. We see some prayers in which they're praying uh, to Jesus Christ, the Savior, our Lord and Savior. Um, now, what we have to be able to, to break down is a, is a common aspect that we see in all of our prayers, and I hear it almost universally, in your name we pray, or in Jesus' name I pray, amen. What do we mean by saying, in Jesus' name I pray, amen? Well, there's actually a lot in that. When we say the word name, we're actually talking about reputation. Now, uh, and we, we know this too, when you say, when you bring up someone you know, all right, when you bring up someone you know and you, you drop that name, your name drop, it's because you think that person has a reputation to be like, wow, you know that guy? All right, when we were talking about Jesus, we're talking about his reputation. His reputation is very it's pregnant. It's so much information there. We think of the creator of the world coming down, becoming a human being at his, in, um, at his, uh, at his birth there, you know, at his, um, in, um, when he is incarnated. All right, so we're thinking, wow, right, this is the God man. This is God become man. We think of all the miracles, all right, all the good things he did time after time, every day of his life, every week of his life, every year of his life, uh, being kind, healing, loving. But then ultimately, at the end of his life, the only person that didn't deserve to die chose to die. And he chose to die for the sins of the world. When we say, in Jesus' name, name, I pray, we're talking about his reputation, who he is. And it's a huge statement. Let's not say it lightly. It's because of him. It's because of Jesus I can say this prayer. Why did everything I just put before this, everything, God, everything I'm praying to you, I'm praying this because Jesus Christ made it possible through his death on the cross. The perfect bridge between God and man dying on the cross, bringing that fellowship back to our creator and his creation. Now, we never actually see an instance in the Bible anywhere of anyone praying to the Holy Spirit or any command to pray to the Holy Spirit. The closest we kind of get, all right, in John 15, 26, it says, the Holy Spirit does not bear witness to himself, but to Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit's kind of mission is not to make sure everybody has heard of the Holy Spirit. His mission is to make sure everybody has heard of Jesus Christ. All right, so he is pointing everyone to Jesus. He's, he's okay with that. Uh, now, we do see uh, instances, we see a prayer, somewhat of a prayer, uh, to the Spirit because we are called into fellowship with the Spirit. In 2 Corinthians 13, 14, it says, The grace of our lead Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of of the Holy Spirit be with you all. All right, so we can see this desire, you know, we can see this, yes, Holy Spirit, we want to enjoy your fellowship that you bring us as you bring us all united together. He unites us in his spirit, praying for that, praying for Lord, bring your, you know, Holy Spirit, bring your presence on this place, let us give us clarity.
clarity, direction, things that we see the Holy Spirit does, bringing knowledge uh, to us, bringing all things to our remembrance. Praying to him for that does in no way seem wrong or out of place uh, in any way. We are certainly seen to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. And even Romans 8.26 kind of reveals that, hey, even when we don't have the words to say, the Holy Spirit kind of uses groanings and underings that we don't even understand, kind of directly talking to God, kind of aligning our spirit with God. All right, and so we see certainly the Holy Spirit is active uh, in our prayer life. But ultimately, we don't have to be afraid of just praying to God. All right, and when we can pray to God, as long as we fully know who it is that we are praying to, we are praying to the triune God. We are praying to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because we know what this means, we know what we are saying when we pray to God. Just because it is a generic term to much of the world, many people in this world claim to believe in God, but they don't have any idea what they mean. They can say, yes, I believe in God exists, and yet never open up Scripture to really seek who it is that God is. But when we pray to God, we do know who it is. We have opened, God, opened His Scriptures we have read the word of God. You know, we read in John uh, chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And there's no doubt that's specifically talking about kind of the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, that he is God. But it's making this cool, interesting little overlap with the word of God, that the word of God has become flesh and dwelt among us, that when we read his words, they are alive. They are the very presence of God. His words are so powerful that they are literally life. All right? And when we read God's word, we know who he is and we're fellowshipping with him. All right? We can actually pray to God knowing who we are talking to, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Directing to the triune God is certainly a beautiful way to pray. Now, I think the most important part, if we have one takeaway in regards to this and whether we should pray to the Father, Son, Holy, or Holy Spirit. Uh, the takeaway is, uh, yeah, as long as you are praying to either the Father, Son, or Holy Spirit, if we are praying uh, to things outside of the Godhead, and whether it's good things like angels or past you know, saints, you know, people that were incredible believers in the faith, I think on one side it's potential that that could be idolatry, and that could be crossing the line that only God deserves prayer, and maybe best case scenario, best case scenario, it does absolutely nothing. So worst case, it's idolatry, best case, is nothing. All right? Because we have full access to God. When I look at people, and I, I have people I love and care about, that they, as part of their repertoire, they will make a prayer to a saint or pray to Mary uh, or another being like that, and I kind of just say, and I said, listen, Jesus Christ has done all the work on the cross. Because of what Jesus did, we have direct access to God himself. He is the mediator between God and man. We can pray directly to God, directly to Jesus Christ. We don't have to have any go-betweens. He is not too busy. Uh, I like how C.S. Lewis put it. When we talk about his infinite nature, what we are really saying is that he can spend all of his eternity on every one of us, every single moment of our life. He is the most personal God possible. It is not like if we were to imagine ourselves as God and be like, oh, man, there's so many people praying so many different things, and this one's praying for the contradictory. Uh, and that's why everyone prayed to win the lottery, so everyone wins $8, because I'm answering everybody's prayer. God can spend all of his eternity with every one of us, every moment of the day, and it doesn't divide his time up. He's infinite. Divide infinity by two, and you still have infinity. Divide it by a billion, you still have infinity. All right, God is able to keep his full attention on us. Um, Fran I, I heard Francis Chan on Monday uh, speak, and he had several illustrations that in time I'll forget who actually said them, and I'll just take them as my own. <laughs> but... He said, listen, I know a couple millionaires. You know, I've sat in the offices of a couple millionaires. But I, sat, I sit in the office every once in a while. I know one billionaire. I know a billionaire. And he says, and when you're sitting and talking to this guy, when you're in his presence, 
you have this overwhelming feeling like, listen, you don't even have to really listen to what I have to say. You could crack off $3 million and not even feel it. When you have a billion dollars, you could change my life with the stroke of a pen and it not affect your life at all. He wouldn't even have to really like think and dwell on it. My life can change. My ministry can change. And he had the joke. He says, I know you're not supposed to play favorites, but come on. Come on. And he says, that's the feeling I want when I'm in the presence of God. When we take the time to pray to the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit, when we take that time in prayer, what we are doing is we are saying we are going to a bajillionaire. God can change our life and it not change his at all. We, he can totally radically change our life and it doesn't affect his being one bit. It doesn't affect all that he has and owns and is capable of doing. It doesn't exert any amount of power on his part to drastically change our existence. Let's have that feeling, that kind of little pit in the stomach feeling like, wow, I can't believe I'm sitting with the creator of the universe here. I can't believe, I can't believe I have a chance to talk to the savior of the world. Wow. Wow. And when we say amen at the end of our prayers, it's really this word. It's like this word verily, truly. All right, what we're saying is, this is going to happen. I believe this. I'm not praying because I'm just like, eh, shot in the dark. Might as well give it a shot. Might as well scratch it off. Let's see. Let's see if this is a I'm going to go buy a, uh, a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, pull my little Monopoly. Uh, go, eh, eh, it's worth a shot. When we say amen, what it should be signifying is, God, I, be I believe, I believe you're going to do this. Because we're either praying and saying, God, I don't think you're going to do this. Or we're praying because we're like, God, I can't do this on my own. I need you. And I believe, I believe I'm praying with your will in mind. Okay? And, and you might be saying, how do I know the will of God? As you read God's word, you're going to begin more and more to understand his desires and will for your life. But when you're praying, you're praying with the best knowledge that you have. God, I believe this is your will to do this. I wouldn't be praying this if I didn't think. You're like, oh, no, I know you're not going to answer this guy. We wouldn't pray that. We pray because we believe that this is God's will. And we say amen at the end because, God, I believe this is in your will for you to do this. And I'm praying this, believing that you're going to do this. Now listen, I know my ways aren't your ways. There's not going to be anger from me. I'm just saying, I believe you're going to do this, and I'm asking you truly, in your name, amen. Let's pray. God, you, you're infinitely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, eternally fellowshipping with one another, totally content in yourself. The Father loving the Son, the Son loving the Father, this perfect union and spirit between the two. God, you are so complex. When I think about the Trinity, when I think about how you can be the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you're all God, and yet that's, it blows our mind, God. God, I'm thankful that I do not serve a God that is totally, capably understandable, that you fit in the box that is the limitations of my mind. You, you don't just stretch it. You explode my brain, God. <laughs> you are amazing. You are incredible. You are good. You are loving. You are patient. You are kind. You are just. Jesus, we pray for continued understanding as we study your word. Holy Spirit, we pray you can bring these things to our mind, to our memories, to our remembrance, that we might be able to use them, use what we learn in your scripture to be encouraged, to encourage others, to challenge others, to share your gospel. Father, we thank you 
for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Jesus, we are thankful that you died on the cross for our sins. And Holy Spirit, we are thankful that you are drawing people to this truth even to this day. Jesus, it is in your perfect, precious, holy name we pray. Amen.